It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to talk about a cool piece of software called Trango and basically it does local communications inside of your network which is really cool when you think about it as a business or as a family. You might want to have the ability to, to communicate with each other but not put yourself out there on the internet for everybody to be able to you know make a phone call, video call or VoIP call, video call, you know those kind of things with you. But, you know, within your local network, you might want to be able to do that. Maybe your kids are across the house or out in a different building like I am where I'm out in my office, but I still want to be able to just, you know, quickly call my, my mom or my wife. And, and basically just having them inside of that same uh, little instance uh, is pretty cool. So it, it basically looks at your IP address, your external IP address, and, and a few other things and determines if you're on the same network and then shows you the other person if you are, which is, which is pretty nice. Before we go on with the installation of Trango, I want to say thank you so much to my patrons over at Patreon, and I want to say thank you to my subscribers at YouTube. Uh, everything you guys do just really supports what I'm trying to do here, so I truly appreciate that. And, I, and thank you so much to the people who've used my affiliate links to say, sign up for DigitalOcean or Hover or SSD nodes, or, you know, any of those services. I appreciate that. And when you do that, you know, let me know what your experience is like. I want to make sure that when I'm providing affiliate links that, that those affiliates are good for you guys too. And if they're not, I don't want them to be an affiliate for my channel. So, so make sure to report back to me if you get a chance to let me know how things are going. Also, if you enjoy my videos, please like and subscribe and then click the little bell for notifications. And that way you'll know whenever new videos come out. This just tells YouTube that I'm doing a good job and doing the right things. And it lets me know that I'm doing the right things too. So I really appreciate it. And let's get on with the installation. So if you want to run this self-hosted, you can go out here to GitHub and basically just find it's Trango self-hosted. And as you move down, there's some instructions down here for running this in Docker. And once you get down to the Docker instructions, um, it kind of just tells you, look, go out there, you know, pull the Docker container, then run this command to run the Docker container. This will work, but if you want to use this on your mobile devices, it's going to create a self-signed certificate and, and your mobile devices won't be able to connect. So if you want to use this with mobile devices, you want to combine Docker and then of course this Docker container and then Nginx Proxy Manager. So you want to make sure that first you set up Docker and I will link to instructions on how to do that. I've just put out a video this past week on, on doing that as a matter of fact, but I've got other ones as well. And then you want to after you've done that, you want to set up, you want to install Docker Compose, which again is very simple once you've got Docker installed. And then you want to go out and install Nginx Proxy Manager because it basically lets you have a nice web GUI for setting up proxies for Nginx. So basically a front end proxy, and then that lets you get Let's Encrypt certificates and everything like that, even on your home network. And, and I give you all the basics, which is basically Nginx Proxy Manager needs to run on port 80 and port 443. And then we'll run this on a different port on our host and we'll let Nginx Proxy Manager point us to the right place to run this thing. So we're going to go through that installation here. It's really not as bad as it sounds, but before we do that, I kind of wanted to show you how this works. So I've already got it uh, set up and running, and I've got Portainer here that shows you that I've got Trango running here on my internal network, and I'm currently using uh, ports, let's see, I think it's 9045 and 9046. Yeah, so 9045 is pointing at port 80, uh, so my host 9045 is pointing at the container port 80 and my host 9046 is pointing at the container 443. So that's that's not too hard to set up and we'll go through that as well. And then I use Nginx Proxy Manager to set up basically a proxy site. So I'm going to open up my extra tab here and I'm just going to go to callme.routemehome.org as this is what I run for my home network. And you'll see here's the interface. Now this looks a lot like Snapdrop. So if you remember the Snapdrop video I did a while back where you can basically use it like AirDrop. So you see other machines that show up and you can drop files to those machines and they can accept them or decline them and vice versa. This looks very familiar as far as that interface goes. And it's a pretty simple interface. Now, I'm running Linux and you notice it shows me a Windows icon. That may just be that he doesn't have a Linux icon. I don't know why it does this, but maybe they'll fix that in the future. Um, but it has my name down here, which is cool. Um, I did have to edit that. It said Windows, I think, when it first found me, but but I changed it. So I'm on here with my, my Linux machine here, and I'm going to come over and I'm going to record my screen on my iOS device. And I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to go to uh, callme.routemehome.org on my phone. 
and you see that I popped up here on the computer screen and I popped up on my phone screen. So this is pretty cool. Now from my phone, I can basically call my computer. So I'm gonna tap on it and you see I get these different options. I can drop a file or I can call or I can do a video call. Um, so I will do a just regular call first and it's gonna be pretty bad because I'll probably get some feedback here in a minute. And it's gonna prompt me that do I wanna allow it to use a microphone and camera? And yes, that's fine. So you see here that it's calling. Now I've got my headphones plugged in so you're not gonna hear the sound, but it does make a ringing sound as well. Let me unplug them and see if you can hear it. Um, I don't know if you're gonna hear it since I had them plugged in before it started doing the call. Uh, probably not, but I probably need to plug them back in uh, before I answer because if I don't do that, then it's going to give a lot of feedback for sure. So now I'm gonna answer. And it's gonna ask me also to allow this. And now I'm in a call from my phone to my system. So let me go back into it here. Yeah, so we're gonna get feedback. Let me mute that microphone. I think we did it. Nope. Let me mute both sides here. There we go. Okay. So I had to mute both sides, but you can see that I'm in the call on the screen and on my phone screen. So um, basically it does get sound. You could hear that through the feedback and I apologize for that. If I deafened anybody, that was not my intention. Um, I'll try to adjust the volume when I do all of my editing. Uh, but, but there you go. You can see what's going on and you can see it's me and then iOS and the same thing reversed on the screen. So when I'm done with my call, I can just hang up. Pretty basic. Now, if I want to call my iOS device, I can do the same thing. Click on it on the screen. My, my icons aren't showing here for some reason, but this time I'm going to do a video call. It's not super well lit in here, but I'm going to do a video call this time and we'll see how that goes and allow. And I just want to mute both sides, but there you go. So. This is my phone moving like crazy over here, so I can move my phone around. I can even turn it around and show you the computer where I'm looking at myself. There's me looking at the computer camera, and here's me looking at my phone camera. So you can really see if I put them right next to each other, in fact. Um, there we go. So if I look kind of at both, there we go. And you can even see my microphone kind of here in the shot when I do that. But that's really the way that it works. It's just video running on my local network. This is not going out over the internet. It is just once it's once it's connected it's a peer-to-peer -peer connection which is pretty awesome so I wanted to kind of show you how this functions and now we're gonna get into the install alright so now that we've got the install going let's go over here and actually just set up portainer um, and I'm so I'm gonna basically take all of the stuff off that I already have set so let me do that real quick and then I'll come back and continue to show you the install that way you don't have to watch me delete all this stuff okay Real quick, I want to show you that I have stopped my Trango container, so it's not running. Um, if I go to that same IP address or that same uh, address, you'll see it's not going to go anywhere. Oh, it did. It shouldn't be. It's very weird since I stopped it. Ah, I see. Okay, it's loading something from the cache, but you see I'm getting this. You're reconnecting up here because it's not actually there. Um, I can go and remove that. Yeah, there we go. 502 bad gateway. It's not running anymore. Cool. Okay, now if we go down, you can still see that I've got the entry here and I wanna keep this because it, it functions just fine, but I'm gonna create everything new uh, for you guys, so no, no big deal there. So we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna run this a little bit different than what they have. So we're gonna to go to our terminal. I'm just gonna highlight and copy this section of this command up to the Docker part. I'm gonna to go to my terminal and I'm gonna SSH over to my home server here and I'll just do ctop to show you still that Trango is not running you can see there it is in red and so what we want to do is paste in that command we just copied and I'm gonna go back I'm gonna take out this part that says container and here for the port I'm gonna make this adjustment so I'm gonna make this um, 8180. I don't think I'm using, well, maybe I am using that. Let's do 9180. I'm not using that. And then here, I'm going to use uh, 9143 because I'm not using that either. So when you run this, it's docker run hyphen D, which is daemon, 
hyphen P for port, which says on the host side, I want this port exposed and I want it to point to 80 inside the container. The next part here for hyphen P says on the host side, I want 9143 on the host to point to 443 in the container. As we move over, we've got hyphen hyphen name. So what do I want to name my, my actual container when it gets created? So I'm going to have to change this because it's, it's uh, already taken. So we'll call this um, call local. Okay, how about that? And then here, this is just the name of the actual image that we want to pull down from Docker. This is all we have to do to get this set up and running. So we're just going to hit enter. Now it's already got the image, so it didn't have to go pull anything. For you guys, it'll have to go pull the actual container down. I've already got the image installed, so it didn't have to do that. But the only difference is you'll see that it goes and pulls down a bunch of little pieces, and you see it run across, and it says extracting and all that kind of stuff. But then once it does, you'll still get something like this at the end to let you know that it should be coming up and starting to run. Now, there's several ways to see if it's actually running. So once you've given it a couple of minutes after you get this uh, symbol, you don't even have to give it a couple of minutes, give it like 30 seconds. You'll just, you can type in Docker PS, and basically that lists all of the containers that you have uh, running at the time. So this is kind of a weird layout. It's hard to read because it's all big, but if we just look across here, we can find that it says names, and that's the third level, and right there is call local. So all of this stuff is for this container. And here we can see that it says 9180 pointing to 80 and 9143 pointing to 443. So we're, we're set up and we're ready and it's got call local already running. Okay. Now if you want to see a little bit more evidence of that, we can type CTOP. Now CTOP is an application you have to go install, but it's pretty useful. It's pretty cool. So here I can see all of my containers and some information about them. So it's kind of like top, like how much CPU, how much memory, things like that, that they're using. And you can see which ones are running and off. And then you can see other things about, other information about some of them. So like AirSonic, I can hit enter and I can go in and say, I just want to see a single view of AirSonic. And then it gives me some charting and things like that. So CTOP is pretty cool. All right, when you hit quit or hit Q, it'll go back. So here we have uh, call local and it's running and you can see what it's using. So there we go. So I'm going to hit Q to get out of that. Now, if I really want to test, then I can go to that IP address, which is 192.168.7.125 on my network, and then I have 9143. So let's see if that loads up. It's going to say 400 bad request because I didn't tell it HTTPS. And then it's going to give me this warning that, hey, this thing has got a self-signed certificate, which I can accept. And once I do, it's going to work here on my, on my local network, on my Linux machine. It'll work on my Mac. It'll work on my Windows machine. But it will not come up on my, on my phone if I try to go to this because right now it's using a self-signed certificate. So it, phones do not like that. Android, iOS doesn't matter. They want signed CA level certificates. So here you can see it says Windows, even though I'm on Linux, which again, I, I, who knows. But it's okay. I know this is me, and I can change this name, and the icon doesn't bother me. So, all right. So this is this is running, but we don't really have it running where we can use it with our device yet. So we're going to close that window for a minute, and we're going to go here to Nginx Proxy Manager, and I'm going to add a new host, and I'm just going to give this a name. Now, when you want to route things to your home, you have to understand that you have to open up at least port 80 and 443 if you're going to run Nginx Proxy Manager and you want to have things be able to get in from the outside of the internet. So on your on your router you have to do some port forwarding of port 80 and port 443 to the IP address of your server where you're running Nginx Proxy Manager. So in my case that's 192.168.7.125. The only thing that can get through my firewall is port 80 and port 443. I have set up a special domain name which is routemehome.org and then I set up an A record for that domain, which is the asterisk symbol. That's it, just like this little symbol right here. And it points to my home public IP address. So anything I enter, if I type anything.routemehome.org, once I set this up all the way through, I would be able to come to my, I'd be able to type in anything.routemehome.org up here in the uh, browser bar. And it would route my traffic to my home IP address, and then Nginx Proxy Manager would try to handle this request. 
So if it doesn't see an entry for something somebody asked for, it just says, oh, you can't get there. If it sees an entry, then it takes you to the login pages or whatever, and then you can do some security beyond that as well. So we'll talk about that. So I don't want to call it that. Let's call this, um, I don't know, local call dot route me home dot org. Okay. So again, I can create any subdomain up here that I want because I have the asterisk set as an A record pointing to my home IP address. If I didn't have that, I would have to go set up an A record for route for, for local call or call local, whichever I call it. I'd have to go set up an A record for local call and then point it to my home IP address in order to get this to resolve. So if you're going to do this, you need to understand that you have to go set up an A record sometime to make sure that it's pointing to your home address. So now my IP address is my actual, I'm going to use my Docker Zero IP address. So let me show you how to get that. So when you're in here, you can do IP ADDR show and then Docker Zero. So I'm, I'm looking specifically for the Docker Zero IP address. And here it is right here. It's all, almost always this number. So you can feel fairly confident if you just want to try that. But if it doesn't work, go, go check it and make sure that's the right one. Now, I'm going to point this to my HTTPS port. So I'm going to change this to HTTPS. And then I'm going to give it 9143. And I'm going to tell it it needs WebSocket support. So Trango needs WebSocket support. Make sure to enable this or you're not going to get things to work right. I'm going to leave it on public access for now and I'm going to hit save. So now I have local call routemehome.org right here and I'm just going to test it. I'm going to click it. It's going to open it up and you see it comes right here to the page but it's giving me this message because it's like hey you're not really connected the way I expect you to be. That's okay. Just don't sweat it. We're going to close that. Now I'm going to go back over here to local call. I'm going to hit the little three dots. I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to go here to SSL. I'm going to say request a new SSL certificate. And I'm going to say force SSL because I want to be I want to make sure if somebody comes to it through not SSL that they get forced over to the secured side. Make sure my email address is in here and make sure your email address is correct because that's how Let's Encrypt can let you know there might be something wrong with a certificate for a site you're running. So make sure that's correct. And then click on the little box to agree. If you want to see their terms of service, you can click on this link and it'll bring them up where you can read them. Once you've got everything set, just like I have here, you're going to click on save. And then just give it a minute because it's going to challenge this domain name and make sure that it can reach it. And if it can, it's going to issue out a CA level certificate for it. So now we're going to go click on this. It's going to open it up and you see the little lock, which is a happy sign. And it says, hey, that's a CA level thing. So there's my machine. Now right here I can click and I can change this to be whatever I want. This is my main. Okay. If, it, if that's what you want. Now it's got a limit on how many characters you can put there. But I'm going to go back into my phone. Let me go into my phone and I'm going to go to the same address. So local call dot route me home dot org. I'm going to hit go. It's going to load up and there it is right there. It popped up just like before. So now I can make phone calls on my local address. Okay, so you saw that I get the phone to show up and I can communicate with it because we're on the same network, but I want to make sure that that's also secure. So the reason I do this in phases and in steps is that I can't set up this security for the access list until I've got my certificate because Let's Encrypt has to be able to reach into my network and find this page and say, oh yeah, it's there, here's your certificate. So once I've done that, I can go in here to Nginx Proxy Manager and I can go to Access Lists. And you see I've got one that says home IP. So let me show you what I set up there. I'll just add another one. So you just want to give this a name. So let's just call this local only. So now that I've given it a name, I'm going to put satisfy any, and then I'm going to move to the authorizations tab. Right here, you'll see that it's already got my username and my password for Nginx Proxy Manager. But if you wanted to add other people's emails and give them a password so they could also access this without having to give them your admin credentials, you could add them here. And then finally, I've got my IP address for my home here. Now, if yours isn't there, you can go get that IP address and then put it in here. 
and then you're just going to hit save. Now that we've saved that, I'm going to go back to our hosts. I'm going to come down here to, to the local call only. I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to go here where it says public and I'm going to go select local only. I'm going to hit save. And now I'm going to click on this again. I'm inside my network, so it should work. Now I'm going to open up my phone. Recording has started. So now I'm going to go back to local. Right there, it's all in there. So I'm just going to hit go. And you see now, because I'm not on my local network, it prompts me. It says, hey, you're not authorized to use this thing. Do you, you sure you should be going in here? So if I put in my credentials, I'll be able to get through and get in. But if I don't, if I hit cancel, it's going to refresh. And you see nothing shows up on the screen. And it's going to keep telling me, hey, you're trying to reconnect. Hey, you're trying to reconnect. Because it can't actually connect to the site. So you see what happens here is I keep trying. It's going to keep messing up. So I'm going to turn my network back on. Let me turn my Wi-Fi back on here. Now you see I popped up right away. So there I am on the screen. And my other machine popped up on my iPhone screen. And I'm able to see those two together. So that's Trango. It's pretty cool. I really like it. Um, so far we've tested it on iOS, on Mac, on Linux. I don't have a Windows machine in reality. This just shows Windows. I have no reason to think that it wouldn't work on Windows. But I think it's pretty cool. So I hope you guys get a lot out of this. Hopefully if you've got like a work network, uh, a VPN of people that you're, that you're working with and you're trying to set up some communications, you'll find this pretty easy to set up. It does take a little effort and a little understanding, but if you follow my steps, it's going to go really well for you. I'll reference videos in the main um, show notes and description that show you how to install Docker and how to install Nginx Proxy Manager so that you can get those set up if you're, if you're not sure how to do it. I don't want to cover it in every video because that alone is a 30-minute video. So hope you get a lot out of this. I hope you enjoy Trango. Let me know in the comments if you like this and if you'd like to see more things like it because there's a lot of communication tools out there. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.